thanks for joining us today. We're excited to have you with us. Uh, this is a, a, an exciting time for us. Um, in, in as um, it, many uh, legacy systems, very much older systems, such as the Octel and others, um, it, which people have held on to for for years, uh, long after uh, new releases have been coming out, uh, things like that. Octel, I think their last release was maybe a decade or more ago. Um, and, and even many newer products uh, that have uh, come out in the last 10 years are, are reaching end of life and end of support. Um, so uh, we're, we're presenting this uh, to hopefully help you as you make that decision as to what's next. What's next for you? What direction do you go? Um, and do, you, uh, do you continue with your existing vendor, your existing supplier? Do you take a look at a new direction? Uh, what really is the best direction for you and your enterprise uh, to, to deploy some technology that's going to take you on into the future in the way that Octel did. Octel was famous for having uh, the best, you know, some of the best set of features in the marketplace. Um, an, an ultra reliable system um, was was always up, rarely ever had any issues or problems. And finding some technology, a newer uh, technology that will be able to replace that in the same manner, providing you with a broad, very broad and deep feature set, along with being a very reliable product, uh, and making that transition from your Octel or whatever system you might have today to the newer technology, making that easier. So um, last year, um, a, a memo came out from, no, about a year ago, I guess it was, uh, a product bulletin came out from Avaya announcing that uh, although they have tried to um, bring to close uh, the, the age of Octel for a number of years now, um, it, there really are some events that are going to be happening in the next year or so that really will speed that along. Um, uh, things like uh, not being able to announce the year 2013 for message uh, sta envelope stamps. Um, and uh, even uh, the end of, uh, at the end of 2015, the system will really cease to function for you. Uh, the, the date's going to reset, as you can see there. And um, it, new messages, uh, even old messages will be unavailable. Message schedule, auto attendance schedules, things like that are going to stop um, or be impaired. Um, and these types, of, this is this is showing for Octel, for example. Here, uh, we've seen these types of product bulletins being sent out by uh, any number of manufacturers of those older legacy systems, those systems that had their birth back in the 80s and 90s. That that, um, that really are now, uh, they're just really coming to the end of their functional uh, lifetime. Uh, and these are really stirring uh, many enterprises and organizations to take a look at, uh, you know, what are they going to do next? What's, what's the next step for them? And uh, we here at ABST feel that we have a very strong, um, strong story to tell when it comes to evaluating those next steps for you. We have a long history. We've been we've been at this about as long as Octel had been. Um, we are currently the largest independent manufacturer of uh, messaging and unified communications um, technologies and. Um, as you can see here, have a long history of, of innovation and delivering applications that customers are requiring and demanding. Um, in many cases, long before um, long before the groundswell of marketplace demand came for customers, we were actually developing customers. For example, the very first flavors of unified messaging, we started developing. We were the first developers of it back in 1992, long before people were actually asking for those features. We were developing them and delivering to the, them to the market very much in the, in the same vein as, uh, as Octel had been for, for, many decade, for many decades as well. Um, and uh, this, uh, our, our thrust, uh, the, the validity of our approach to it has really been validated by uh, many customers um, names that you're going to easily recognize uh, in this list uh, here: North American customers, uh, people like uh, Procter and Gamble, Johns Hopkins University and Hospital, 
um, Mass Mutual, many uh, state, local, and federal governments, uh, um, or departments uh, are trusting AVST technology um, to deliver the next generation of unified communication solutions. In addition to uh, many customers around the world, we have an international presence and a, a strong presence throughout the world of, of delivering this type of technology to customers that uh, have very recognizable names. And these can be small systems, you know, four, eight port systems serving just a uh, hundred, a couple hundred users on up to very, very large systems with uh, multiple hundreds of ports serving tens of thousands of users uh, across an enterprise or at, uh, at a single location. And as we go through this, we're going to take a look at uh, one of those customers and give you a prime example of what one of those customers uh, took a look at, what their needs were, and how um, the ABST technologies uh, were able to meet those needs. One of the things about uh, the CX uh, family of products, uh, the CX UC communication solutions, is that there's no one size fits all within the system. Uh, and this is, uh, again, hearkening back to the Octel uh, heritage that many of you are used to. Uh, that was one of their claims to fame is that you, d you didn't have to buy the new technology for everybody within your enterprise. And that's not true with uh, many, tech, many uh, solution providers today where everyone has to be unified messaging or everybody has to have mobility features or speech access when those really aren't required uh, for those particular users. With the CX uh, product, uh, we really uh, have designed the product to give you unlimited um, and unlicensed voicemail and call processing uh, applications. So as many call processing menus as you want, as many voicemail boxes as you want to create on the system, you can create those and, um, and, and use those as you wish with no additional licensing. The things that do require licensing, uh, we allow you to deploy those based on your enterprise's uh, requirements. Um, so you don't have to de deliver the advanced applications uh, possibly to a user that comes in and sits down at their desk from 8 o'clock and stays there till 5 o'clock. They probably don't need advanced mobility, for example, um, or you know, necessarily require speech access to their mailbox. Um, and you know, requiring you to uh, spend a lot of extra money on licensing and, um, and deployment, uh, that really isn't necessary. We never require you to do that within the CX uh, product line. Um, allowing you to deliver the applications that are required for your, for your users based on their needs and requirements. One of, the, um, one of the strengths of the Octel system and a, a number of the legacy platforms, the, the, very, the ones in the 80s and the 90s, was their ability to interoperate with, with PBXs out there. And we have, uh, we have that tradition as well. Being an independent manufacturer of this technology, we, you know, we, this has to be a core competency with us, and it really has been. So uh, regardless of what type of PBX you may have or what type of types of PBXs you have, uh, the, we can support that on a single uh, or multiple CX platforms. So we, you may have uh, Cisco at one location, NEC at another location, Avaya at another location, and then another location is using Microsoft Link as their telephony platform. The ability for the CX platform to integrate with that and a single CX platform to integrate with multiple PBXs simultaneously simultaneously, um, it allows you to deliver an enterprise solution that can meet the needs of all of your organization, regardless of how many locations you may have or how many different PBX systems you may have within your particular environment. So one of the things we're going to uh, take a look at is give you an example, a real world example uh, from the University of Toronto um, as uh, their decision making process, the things that were important to them which based on the results of the, the poll we just took are things that are very important to you as well. Um, uh, and see how the, uh, see how the ABST product, uh, the CX platform, um, meets those requirements uh, in, in unique ways uh, for you. 
So there was uh, the University of Toronto, um, for those of you that don't know, is Canada's largest university. Um, it's, it's a very large institution up in the greater Toronto area. Um, as you can see there, there's uh, you know more than 11,000 faculty and staff members, more than 72,000 students there. So a very, very large university, uh, you know, equal in size to many uh, large universities we have here, uh, you know, Johns Hopkins, UCLA, uh, places like that. So uh, it, uh, it provided, they really had some uh, significant challenges, uh, as you can imagine, when they talk about replacing a, an octal system that they had had for probably for a couple of decades uh, that had served them well, uh, but now they, they saw the handwriting on the wall coming, and even a few years before this uh, announcement came out, they decided they needed to make a change because they saw what was coming. Uh, they had multiple campuses, um, and they one of the things that they wanted to do was to be able to centralize their messaging across all of their campuses, um, and, which was a challenge for them uh, in utilizing the Octel system, uh, but really was quite easy for them to accomplish utilizing a CXE platform. Um, we have a very unique architecture, uh, not only within the architecture, but also within the feature set, a very broad feature set to support um, centralized features serving a multiple location um, network here, uh, their main campus in Toronto, St. George area, uh, Mississauga and uh, Scarborough with secondary campuses outside of the, the main Toronto area. Uh, the, the feature set that we had here with, uh, they didn't utilize multiple time zones, but uh, different dialing plans, uh, multiple PBX integrations was very important to them because of uh, the way their PBX structure was set up within in the environment. Um, and the architecture of the system really lent itself to it, providing a single uh, main database server, but uh, the call processing application servers uh, being able to spread those across the enterprise. And uh, that's a unique advantage of the CX platform is the unique architecture of the system itself and the ability to expand the architecture to meet your needs. So uh, there's two primary server components within the architecture of a CXE platform. The system server is the main database server. It's really kind of the brains of the operation. Uh, it's uh, it, all of the administrations done towards the system server. Um, this is where the mailboxes reside. The message database resides here. If a person is doing unified messaging, uh, the system server is what hands the message off to the email server. Uh, so this is really the the main brains of the operation. This is this is what controls everything. Those call servers are the the workhorses. They are the they're the servers that actually connect to the PBX. Uh, when calls ring in from the PBX and forward over either through for call processing, automated attendant applications, or into a user's mailbox, uh, the they're answered by call servers. Um, the call servers um, are survivable. They have a, a portion of the database residing on them that is replicated from the system server on a real-time basis so that in the event uh, so, for example, maybe this WAN were to go down. Uh, these call servers would be able to answer and process calls from their PBX um, completely uninterrupted. So there would be no interruption in any call processing automated attendant applications. Uh, if a user was programmed for um, our mobility features with advanced find me, follow me, uh, availability processing, that would still be fully functional. Callers would be able to leave messages. And those messages would be queued on the call servers until communication could be restored to the system server. And having multiple call servers operating independently of each other um, allows it to continue even if you had a server failure of a call server. So for example, here at Site 2, if one of these call servers were to fail or have to be taken offline for maintenance, the other server just continues answering and processing calls as if nothing happened. Uh, so the people that are calling into the University of Toronto or into your enterprise, your customers, uh, the people that are most important to you to keep your business going going, your customer base, those uh, people would be completely uninterrupted in their ability to interact with your enterprise through the CXE platform. Uh, so providing a very high level of survivability um, just with the initial architecture of the system, um, but adding an additional layer for high availability 
by multiple or a secondary uh, system server um, up that can take over automatically in the event that there is a failure of the primary system server. Uh, so if, if in the middle of the night, for example, this system server were to go down for what, some reason, this backup system server configured in a high availability mode would automatically take over the role as the active system server. Uh, during normal operation, the primary system server would be replicating the entire database over to the backup system server so that in that situation where the backup system server would have to take over, it has the full database on it and can take over. The call servers will automatically rehome to the backup system server and you're at full operation um, and maintain full operation continually through this architecture. And even taking it a step further, Further to um, to address disaster recovery for the loss of the entire main data data center site, um, having a remotely deployed system server, either in in place of this back this uh, automatic the secondary system server, or in addition to providing you with the um, the failover option in the event that you lost the main data center, uh, the ability to bring that backup system server up, the, the, the remotely installed backup system server up very quickly and easily, um, and then provide full functionality again for all the call servers would automatically rehome to that uh, backup system server regardless of where it's located, co-located with the primary or located at a remote location. So providing that uh, level of survivability has been, been seen as a very valuable asset for many enterprises and the ability to have multiple call servers at multiple locations. We showed two locations here. You saw three locations in the University of Toronto layout. Uh, we can support up to 20 call servers and even more locations than that utilizing uh, gateway devices to reach out to many to some of those smaller locations that may not require the full survivability of call servers. Um, so the architecture uh, really gives you um, a very high level of uh, functionality, survivability as well. And this was a very valuable um, uh, reason for uh, the University of Toronto for choosing the CX uh, product. A couple other challenges that they had had to do with their um, with their user base. Um, they obviously had to replace the the legacy Octel system, but when you have 11,000 plus users um, uh, that uh, have been used to for some of them for decades utilizing the Octel system, um, it can be a real challenge to get them used to a new system that's out there. And there's a number of features available in the CX product uh, that address that. First is the breadth and depth of the, the underlying feature set of the system itself. Um, as we mentioned, we've been around for more than three decades now, um, developing um, and really leading the pack in developing best of breed messaging and call processing solutions. We really have the broadest and deepest feature set available of any product that's out there currently uh, in the marketplace today. Um, the ability to license the advanced options uh, as you see fit for the only the users that you need to deploy it for is a significant advantage, and that was seen as a significant advantage for the University of Toronto. Uh, that was one thing that they really stress is they did not want a one-size-fits-all solution in their environment. And you can imagine that that's true with a university as large as that. The diverse needs within the university requires a um, not to have a one-size-fits-all solution. One of the things that really uh, drew them um, in, this, in this section of the evaluation process was our alternate telephone user interfaces. Um, we emulated the Octel ARIA telephone user interface for them, along with, uh, which may be important to many of you, many other um, legacy products. Uh, we emulate the message management keystrokes for those uh, telephone user interfaces. And unlike many competitive solutions that they found, ours more closely matched the original message management keystrokes than any other solution that they evaluated. So, um, you know, for example, they wouldn't push a button to forward a, a message 
um, and then have to go to an entirely different set of buttons to push to record the introduction to that forwarded message and to address the message. It was exactly like what they had experienced within their Octel system, making the transition from their Octel system to the new CXE platform um, to be one of the um, one of the smoothest that they had experienced and very easy for their users to, to make that transition. Another thing that is uh, was unique to, to pretty unique to us uh, and very attractive to the University of Toronto was the fact that we don't license individual mailboxes on the system. Uh, so for voice mailboxes, uh, you can create as many as you need. So uh, going beyond the 11,000 people that they had initially to 12,000, 13,000, 14,000 people, if they had the need to, they can just create the voice mailboxes and they don't have to worry about individual mailbox licensing. And that was uh, seen as a, a very valuable um, commodity to them. Uh, to not have to worry about am I, am I bumping up against it just to add, you know, a couple dozen more voicemail boxes for voicemail users? Uh, do they have to go out and write another check, buy more mailbox licenses? That's not true on the CXE platform, and that was a, a significant advantage uh, for the University of Toronto. As you can imagine, an enterprise of that size gets a lot of, uh, you know, automating incoming calls was very important to them. And they had used their Octel system for call processing applications uh, for quite a while. Uh, they had more than 300 automated attendant menus uh, deployed on their Octel system. Um, and migrating those to the CX platform, uh, the, the features that we have available um, within the system really allowed them to duplicate their existing menu structure uh, very closely and very smoothly. Um, and we're able to, uh, to take a look at adding some additional features as well. For example, uh, the automated attendant menus within the CX platform can be, of course, DTMF, um, as you might imagine, uh, the traditional press one for this, two for this, three for this, dial the extension of the party you wish to reach, dial by name directory where you spell the name with the dial pad, but we can speech enable any call processing menu uh, within the system. Um, and use, utilizing the speech directory when you deploy the system across multiple sites, for example, the ability to have directories when somebody when you say the name Bob Smith to try and reach Bob Smith, if you're ta if you're speaking within a specific location and a call processing application within that specific location, the system will only search for Bob Smiths that are at that location. It won't search Bob Smith throughout the entire uh, the entire directory. Directory. And with a directory uh, exceeding 11,000 users, um, that would be, they saw that uh, when they would start to deploy speech directories as being a significant advantage for them to be able to segregate the directories like that. Uh, as you can see, not only do they have a lot of menus, but the uh, CXE platform, uh, the, doing some traffic reporting on it, uh, takes over 450,000 calls a month. That's more than 20,000 calls a day. Uh, on the system. So having uh, having a system with this powerful call processing application as you'll find within the CX platform was very valuable to them to be able to duplicate what they were doing before on their Octel system, but to be able to expand those capabilities and the options that they deliver to their, uh, to their callers um, to be able to deliver advanced applications and make it more streamlined for callers to be able to get through. So for example, if if you, uh, if your organization has a number of call processing menus, um, and maybe uh, callers have to navigate through, you know, three or four or five different menus before they're able to be transferred to someone, you, speech enabling that can often flatten those menus out, and maybe they only have to go through one or maybe two menus to reach the the destination that they need to. Where Previously, they had to go through four or five menus to do that. That makes a much more pleasant experience for your callers. Um, a lot inspires them to use the technology rather than just dialing zero or saying operator as soon as they hit the system, uh, which makes for a much uh, much smoother uh, experience for the callers in getting through the system that they need to get through. And uh, of course, uh, deploying new technology. 
um, most enterprises, and University of Toronto was no exception, they wanted to start not just uh, replicate what they were doing today, but they wanted to start uh, deploying some advanced applications, such as unified messaging, mobility, things like that, um, to really enhance the experience and make the system and the ability to reach people much more smooth and for users to be able to get to their their messages, their mailbox, other people uh, much more smoothly. So unified messaging within the CXE platform uh, is really one of the most flexible solutions currently available um, from any, any other manufacturer. Um, we can, uh, we're rated as a best of breed solution by many leading uh, analysts that are out there. And the reason that we are listed as a best of breed solution is because we can integrate to virtually any email environment that's out there. Whether it's premise based or cloud based, uh, the, the CXE solution can provide full unified messaging um, to whatever email environment uh, you may happen to have. Not only do we do that, but we can support multiple email servers simultaneously. Uh, whether that's multiple of the same email servers, such as was found at the University of Toronto, where they had multiple exchange servers within their environment, um, but uh, whether you have different email platforms, maybe through mergers and acquisitions, you have exchange at some locations, group-wise at others. Um, maybe uh, such, maybe you've uh, had some locations that have started migrating to the cloud with Office 365 or Gmail. Uh, that was one thing the university was uh, looking, uh, was uh, getting ready to evaluate was whether they wanted to keep a premise-based email solution or migrate up to the cloud. And our ability to um, integrate simultaneously to their existing exchange servers and up to Gmail, for example, if that's what they ended up choosing, um, and assigning that on a user-by-user -user basis which email environments they were, um, a user was assigned to, was uh, seen as a very valuable uh, um, solution for them. Um, flexible storage options. Uh, you can have the messages stored on the email server. You can have the messages stored on the CX server. Whatever is appropriate for you. You can have secure messaging where users are not able to get possession of the WAV file to forward it externally to your organization. Uh, many of your organizations may have some of those requirements um, from discoverability, uh, confidentiality, compliance, things like that. Um, you have specific needs and requirements and the ability to, on a user-by-user -user basis, change the method of deploying unified messaging. Um, to your user base uh, will provide you with a very um, powerful solution for your users, uh, along with all, you know, all of the other features of unified messaging, text-to-speak reading of email messages, localized desktop clients. So um, if you have, um, maybe you have an office, your main office is in St. Louis, but you have a, a remote office down in Mexico City or in San Diego, and uh, some, you know, some of the people there speaking Spanish would like to have a Spanish desktop clients, um, uh, localizing the desktop clients to make it for a much more smooth user experience uh, is also provided and available through the CX uh, platform. And then expanding that on mobility features, um, which is really uh, one of the one of the highlights of things that are, people are looking for as they're evaluating newer technologies. Where does that, how do you deliver mobile uh, access to your users? Not only to access from outside callers to get to your users, but for your users to be able to get to the information they need within the enterprise itself when they're being mobile. And we have any number of mobility features on the system, single number reach, uh, mobile number protection so that uh, if you use single number reach and you're publishing out a single telephone number as we do here at AVST, for example, uh, there's a single telephone number that anybody can dial and reach anybody in the organization, whether they're sitting at their desk with their PBX extension uh, right in front of them, or maybe they're down the hall or out of the office traveling on business. Um, the ability for the system to route the call to the appropriate device based on what their needs are um, at that time and, and changing that routing based on the time of day, day of week, the specific needs of the user 
Um, it really allows callers to get connected as quickly and expeditiously as possible to the person that they need. Um, the mobile client allows uh, all of these mobile functions to be able to reside on your Android or iPhone device. Um, and being able to gain access to, uh, callers gain access to you, you gain access to your messages, for example, your mailbox settings, uh, things like that, to be able to uh, visually and audibly screen callers as they're uh, getting to you. Because uh, sometimes the, the job you're doing, the work you're doing right now, is more important at that moment than the call that's interrupting what you're doing. Uh, the, the ability to do both visual and audible call screening allows you to make the choice as the person receiving the call whether that call is one you want to take or one you want to uh, allow to go to voicemail, one you want to communicate some information back to, things like that. So the mobility features uh, have been are, were very important to the University of Toronto and has been shown to be very important to many of our other customers uh, as they're evaluating uh, their next generation system. So the product uh, that we have is uh, the CXE product and you know as we bring the product to market um, we start looking at you know everybody that brings a product to market looks at what's the target customer for this product uh, you know what's the prime customer and you know, as we look at that and look at the capabilities of the system, um, you know, we, we look at the features and capabilities of the system and as you see these pop up, whether it's, uh, you know, replacing a legacy um, uh, voice messaging system or the migration from a TDM based PBX to an IP PBX, a mixed PBX environment that we talked about, really uh, making it more smooth for your users to transition from that legacy platform to the new platform, um, taking advantage of some of the advanced applications, uh, migrating from premise-based to private cloud or even public cloud um, solutions, uh, and the ability of our product um, to meet all of these needs really means that most enterprises are our ideal customer. Um, we've really engineered the system to meet the specific, uh, uh, the specific requirements of uh, people that are desiring this technology uh, and making the system meet the needs um, and be flexible enough to accommodate the needs of diverse customers and diversity within individual customers because as we said there's very little within the system that's a one size fits all. You can deploy these applications uh, really as you need, as you want, um, as broadly as you need to have them or within just a small group of users, um, making that transition from legacy technology to um, best of breed and cutting edge technology as smooth and uh, easy for you as possible. So uh, you know, we know that uh, oftentimes on these we have some customers that already have a, a Call Express or a CXE system. So we just wanted to share some of the uh, with those customers. Um, share uh, some of the uh, features that have come out in our latest uh, release, uh, version 8.2. And 8.2 really has kind of taken the form of three uh, releases. Uh, we've had some service updates which have uh, provided some significant functionality which uh, oftentimes would be called full releases. but. Uh, um, we've uh, we've put them out as uh, service updates uh, for 8.2, uh, but you can see in, in version 8.2, amongst many of the other features, and, and these aren't the entire feature set that came with each one of these. These are the you know kind of like the top uh, one or two or three um, capabilities that were in them. But uh, many of the advanced mobility features and mobile client features uh, became available in 8.2. Um, uh, and the mobile clients being the highlight of that. Uh, an enhancement to some other mobility features. The, the mobile client being the client that um, the native client that can run on Android and uh, and iPhone devices. Uh, in service update two, um, we've provided some additional uh, international language supports um, to expand uh, the the native language support uh, for the system in in some areas of the world that we hadn't had languages uh, native languages before, and also some enhancements to Microsoft. Link integration. Um, uh, you know, Link is uh, one of those up-and-coming uh, new telephony environments. It, it obviously goes beyond 
just telephony. Uh, it's primarily a collaboration tool uh, for instant messaging, uh, confer you know, conference uh, messaging, uh, file sharing, things like that. But it's starting to expand out into telephony features, and our ability to integrate with that means that uh, uh, you know, you don't have to be limited by just the feature set of Link. Link can be um, um, it can expand out and take advantage of the capabilities of the CXE platform uh, without having to deploy um, external gateways, uh, SIP gateways, things like that, which uh, may be required in many environments. And then uh, service update two, uh, uh, full virtualization. We have been doing virtualization for quite a while. Uh, with the CXE platform, but uh, we had a few component. We had uh, one or two components that could not be virtualized um, for different reasons. Uh, we've uh, we've overcome some of those hurdles, and um, full virtualization of all uh, CXE uh, components and server components uh, is now fully supported, and increased scalability, allowing the system to scale up to 500 ports. Um, and to allow uh, us to service, uh, we've had a, a couple of customers that have exceeded uh, the 384 ports that we had before, and uh, this allows them to expand uh, and increase on up uh, by you know 30, 40 percent uh, increased uh, scalability for those customers that are very, very large. So, uh, you know, the, the, we'd uh, like to open it up for questions now. We've uh, hopefully we've uh, you've seen through this that uh, the CXE platform is really a, a can be a very valuable platform and very interesting platform for you to take a look at as you're looking at what is that next step. Uh, and, you know, you, you, obviously the the Avaya folks are telling you that you know Aura messaging is the way to go. Uh, we certainly feel that we can provide you with a, a very robust solution and one that certainly you might want to take a look at um, rather than just taking that uh, that next step uh, um, with the same manufacturer that you have. We think we can provide you with some significant advantages uh, really over most any competitive solution that's out there. So let's open it up for the questions. Emily, do we have any? Yeah, we do have a couple questions. Um, okay. First question is, can AVST's solutions be virtualized? Yeah, yeah. We uh, just mentioned that uh, we all of the server components of the CXE platform uh, can be virtualized today in VMware um, uh, four dot one or uh, some of the components can be back uh, at VMware ESX CSXI version four. Um, some of them require four dot one or five. Okay. Um, next question. Sorry, there's a few coming in, so let me scroll up. Can you discuss the management tools a little bit and how this integrates with various pieces of the IT infrastructure? Sure. Um, we uh, we have our own management tools. Uh, you know, one of the things that we need to be able to do is to provide a solution that provides um, it can work into really any environment, whether it's an Active Directory environment or you know what particular PBX you have, things like that. Um, so we do have our own uh, administration clients and, and management clients uh, that that can that are available on the system. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, we do have some um, some connectivity uh, and some ability to do administration, uh, user administration, for example, within uh, within Active Directory um, interface. So uh, within users and computers within Active Directory, when you're making a new user, you can uh, we can add a tab to that without ex without. Uh, expanding the schema or extending the schema, we can uh, have a, an AVST tab, a CXE tab on uh, on there, so that you can create their mailbox um, on the CXE platform while you create their uh, network account. Uh, with a number of PBX manufacturers within the PBX. Uh, administration client. There is uh, a connection over to the uh, over to the platform uh, as well. Um, within Second Nature, uh, Unimax Second Nature, which is a a very robust administration tool that can tie together your entire environment, uh, not only your voice environment with PBXs and and uh, messaging platforms, but also um, can reach out to your data environment, Active Directory, and things like that. Uh, we are fully integrated into the Unimax Second Nature administration um, component. Uh, 
as well as providing um, included with each system that goes out the door. We have an API available so that uh, you can create custom interfaces to your unique infrastructure uh, to make the administra user administration within the system um, to meet your specific needs uh, with custom application development as well. So we try and cover, um, you know, give pretty good coverage to the gamut, uh, whether it's integrating with existing PBX administration, uh, integrating to Active Directory, providing our own clients, or giving you the tools that you need to develop your own custom administration interfaces or um, connections. Uh, for example, maybe you use PeopleSoft um, to, to, as your HR uh, components. You could use our APIs and the APIs of PeopleSoft to be able to, uh, when you cr create a new employee within PeopleSoft, you can go over and create their uh, CX email box uh, without having to, uh, to go to multiple interfaces. You can just use the PeopleSoft interface, for example, to make that, uh, make that entry. Um, and since we're not tied at the hip to any of these environments, um, deleting a user in one, for example, say you're using our Active Directory um, administration component. Um, if you delete their network account, that does not necessarily delete their CXE mailbox. Um, you could have it so it deletes their mailbox, or you could have it so that it keeps their mailbox on the system uh, because they may have messages in there that you want to uh, that you want to maintain. Disabling their account within the Active Directory environment does not disa necessarily disable their mailbox within the CXE environment unless you choose to do that. Um, so uh, it, it, we kind of give you the best of both worlds, being kind of separate but still integrated into your particular environment. Great, thank you. Okay, next question. Um, can you review the key octal dates again? Yeah, so the, and um, let me just uh, slide back up to that slide so you can see them yourself. We're flying back over them here. There you go. So um, it, beginning on January 1st of 2014, it, when, it, when octal announces the time and date stamp for a message, if the message was left in the current year, it does not announce the year. Uh, so for example, if you were to get a message that um, was left on January 1st of this year, it would just announce that that message was left on January 1st. If you got that same message on December 31st of last year, the system would announce that that message was left on December 31st, 2012. Um, beginning in 2000, it, the system does not have the ability to announce the year 2013, which won't have any impact this year, but next year it, um, it will have an impact because any messages you may have in your mailbox that were left for you this year, you, would not, you may have trouble distinguishing if that was a, a new message that was left for you or is it an old message, for example. And then on November, 20, November of 2015, that's when the system will automatically reset the system date back, uh, you know, 30 years. And um, obviously, um, messages will disappear, or will appear to disappear certainly from the system because um, it, that will look like a message that was not left in the past, for example. Um, auto attendance may have problems, uh, schedule dates, things like that may have problems. So. Um, th those dates are fast approaching. Just think of how fast last year passed. <laughs> you know, the next year or two are going to go very, very quickly. So now is the time to really take advantage of, uh, of migrating away from those products uh, at, as you're able to. Okay. Uh, next question is, are the station ports SIP? So it really depends on the PBX. We support uh, more than, uh, you know, as we mentioned, more than 400 different PBX integrations, um, and really depends on the PBX itself, which um, what method we use. Sometimes we use digital stations from the PBX. Um, uh, for example, with the Avaya Communication Manager PBX, we can support integration with analog stations directly terminating into the CXE platform. We can support digital stations. We can support digital trunks. We can support SIP 
stations, or we can support SIP trunks, and the SIP trunks can be installed with or without uh, session manager. So, um, and many other PBXs are the same way. It really depends on the PBX itself, um, what type of uh, integration will be supported. But the thing that's uh, great for you uh, as you're evaluating this is with most major PBXs, we don't have just one method of, of providing PBX integration. We have multiple methods for providing that integration, which means that you can choose the, the one that is going to be most economical for you to deploy. You're not forced to SIP enable your PBX, for example, in order to deploy CXE. You can, you can support the integration that you need today and that is best and most economical for you today. And then later on, when you decide you're, you're going to start doing SIP for other things, you can migrate that integration from the digital stations or digital trunks to SIP stations or SIP trunks. Or if, you're, or if your PBX today is already SIP enabled and you're trying to, uh, we have many customers that are trying to deploy as many applications as possible utilizing SIP as opposed to uh, using digital or analog uh, interfaces. And we can certainly accommodate in many, uh, in most major PBXs uh, that are available today. So, um, you know, we would certainly be happy to get together with you and sit down with our, you know, with our sales and engineering staff and take a look at what your particular environment looks like and, and deploy the solution and, and engineer the solution to be the best to fit into your environment. And a, uh, again, a unique thing about the CXE platform is maybe you have multiple locations. Maybe your, your main location, you have a, a new PBX that has uh, SIP enablement already in it, uh, and you have another remote location that has an older PBX that only supports digital or analog station integration, um, and a third location that uh, may just have analog integration, and a fourth location that just supports digital trunk integration. You can support all, a single CXE system can provide full integration to all of those PBXs at all of those locations, providing full integration to all of them, and as you migrate away from those legacy PBXs and expand your new PBX at the headquarters out to those remote locations, it's just a matter on our system of just changing the integration on that call server at that location. So those types of transition um, um, thrusts within an enterprise are very easily served within the CXE platform. Okay, great. Um, next question is, is the CXE suited for a carrier solution or does AVST have another solution geared towards the carrier? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the CXE is really designed as a, as a, a premise-based enterprise solution, although, as we mentioned, we can, um, if you are using a cloud-based PBX, for example, an IP PBX that's hosted in the cloud, a hosted solution, either for your PBX or your email, a premise-based CXE platform can provide integration to many of those uh, hosted solutions. Um, but if you're talking about placing the CXE platform in the cloud and not having a premise-based solution, it's really not designed to do that. However, AVST does support um, a, a cloud-based solution, um, it, and uh, we certainly would be happy to visit with you. So uh, please, uh, please contact us after this uh, after this webinar, um, and Emily will give you the appropriate contact information at the end. Um, and we would be happy to sit down with you and take a look at your specific environment and see what would be the best solution for to recommend for you um, to meet your your individual and unique requirements. Yeah, you can go ahead and email us at info at avst.com with any questions. I'll also be sending out an email to all attendees um, of the slide deck. So you'll go ahead and have um, my contact information. But if you do have any questions or want to reach out to us, the email is info at avst.com. Yeah, but it, one, thing I, one thing I mentioned there is, is important to note, and I want to make sure that it's really clear to everybody, is because a lot of organizations are, are migrating from premise-based solutions up to cloud-based solutions for things like PBX, uh, maybe even email, things like that. Um, and the CXE platform is able to integrate into those cloud-based solutions um, uh, very well. Have, keeping your messaging on-premise, a lot of people don't want their voice messaging to be residing in the inside the cloud. Uh, so we can provide that blend of solutions with a premise-based CXE. 
uh, to your cloud-based uh, PBX um, or email solution. So, Great. Okay, um, next question. Is the capability 100% with the current Call Express servers we have? Um, so the, the functionality of the system, the features and capabilities of the system are not dependent on what type of hardware you have, what type of servers you have. Um, the, the types of servers really have more to do with, uh, and you know, we're talking here now CPU and memory usage, memory, uh, the way they're equipped from CPU and memory, uh, maybe what operating system they have. Um, that really has to do with capacity of the, of the server, not functionality. We're not limited for the functionality of the system based on the type of server, whether it's real or virtual, whether it's a little bit older, had, doesn't have quite as much horsepower to it as Windows 2003 server as opposed to Windows 2008, uh, those types of things. Uh, that really has to do with the capacity of the server, the number of ports, the number of simultaneous calls, um, the number of uh, how high it can scale rather than the functionality and features that are that are available on the system. The features are available regardless of what type of server environment you're deploying it into. Okay. Next question is, can system light MWI on two separate system devices at the same time? Example, message yeah, light on, oh, go ahead. No, that, that's that's. A, I was just going to say that's a great question because, especially in multiple environment, multiple location environments, uh, users may have uh, a telephone at one office, and then they try. You know, there are three days in the Columbus office, and two days in the Cleveland office, for example, and they have telephones and offices at both locations. And the answer to that question is yes. Um, uh, each user can have multiple devices assigned to them, and a single mailbox can light the message waiting lights on any number of uh, PBX extensions, even uh, even if those are served by different PBXs. So maybe you have um, an NEC PBX in the Columbus office, and you have um, an old Nortel PBX or a Siemens PBX up in the Cleveland office. Uh, we can light the message waiting lights at both offices um, with a message that's left in a single mailbox on the CXE platform. Great. Okay, next question. Will it do... PRI and SIP both at the same time? Yes, absolutely. There, um, you can mix and match um, integrations uh, in any way, it, not in any way. There are one or two minor restrictions that, um, that don't really impact anybody, uh, that, that don't impact very many people, but um, for the most part, uh, a single server can integrate to multiple uh, doing QSIG and SIP integration, for example, E1 or T1 QSIG and SIP integration. And if if you're in those situations where you don't have you don't you can't support it on a single call server, you could have two call servers, um, one doing the SIP integration and the other doing the QSIG integration. If that were a restriction, it's not a restriction for us, but just because those were the terms that you used. Uh, in the in the ones where you can't have two different types of integrations on a single call server, um, you know we can just split that between call servers um, and and make that happen. So really, it, it really doesn't matter what your what your environment looks like. We can engineer the system to to accommodate that, regardless of how it looks and what type of integration we're using. Okay, great. Um, next question is, how many extensions can one mailbox support? Um, I believe it's up to uh, 100 different extensions or device. We call them devices because, you know, it's really it, it, where you can be reached and what t type of telephone you're using to access your mailbox. Really, it, you know, 10 years ago, it was your PBX extension and maybe your cell phone sometimes, but it's really expanded beyond that. It, it, sometimes it's a PBX extension sitting on your desk at the office. Other times it's your home telephone for when you're working at home. Uh, maybe it's your business cell phone, your personal cell phone. Um, it's really expanded beyond that. So we don't call them extensions anymore. We call them devices and in the, within the system. And uh, the, we allow you to, each mailbox may ha can have up to 100 different devices assigned to it. Um, so that I don't know too many people that have 100 uh, telephone devices that they utilize on a regular basis. 
Um, and I think our software engineers thought about how many was the most anybody would use and multiplied it by 10 or 20. Um, I think I've got uh, four different devices assigned to my mailbox, um, uh, but you can have a, you can have up to about a hundred. I think it's a hundred uh, today that can be assigned to any single mailbox. So certainly uh, broad enough to uh, meet virtually any needs that uh, I can think of. Great. Okay. Next question. Do you have a Cisco TUI? Uh, we we don't have a Cisco TUI today. The TUIs that we have are the ones that you saw uh, previously on the slide, uh, and I'll pull that back up so that you can see it. We have the uh, Octel Aria and Octel Serenade. We have Avaya Intuity Audix, Nortel Meridian Mail Call Pilot, uh, the Centigram or Mitel Newpoint with the Centigram interface. Um, and uh, some uh, some of our other uh, products from Active Voice, the Kinesis and the Repartee, uh, which are also the same as uh, some NEC um, legacy TUIs as well. So um, those are the ones that we currently support on the system, uh, along with uh, our native TUI. Um, uh, those are supported. So I think what's that, nine or ten different telephone user interfaces. Um, so there you go. Great. Um, there's another specific question, and I just wanted to let that customer know that we will um, follow up with you on um, how to migrate over to AVST platform, and we'll go ahead and follow up with you after the webinar. Um, next question is, are the TUIs identical to the platforms they're emulating? Yeah, so the, they are they are identical from a, uh, for message management keystrokes. Um, uh, it, we've expanded them a little bit for unified messaging. For example, um, you know, some of the older systems, Octels and, and things like that, and Centigrams certainly didn't, uh, they, they may have had some slight inkling of unified messaging, but they really didn't do unified messaging. So we've expanded those a little bit for unified messaging. So there will be a slight variation there, but it's really an expansion of the TUI rather than a change to the TUI. Um, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's uh, virtually identical for message management on all of them. Uh, certainly the closest that are available from, from any manufacturer that's out there. And um, it, the mailbox management keystrokes, uh, one thing to note is the mailbox management keystrokes, the, you know, changing your greetings, changing your passwords, uh, things like that, those will be different um, than your current um, than your cur the current legacy TUI that you have, but um, it, they are uh, identical for the thing you use 99% of the time, which is the message management keystrokes uh, of the system. Okay, great. Uh, we just have a couple more questions. Sure, uh, yeah. What are the options for speech-to-text regarding transcribing voicemail messages to an email? Yeah, so we have today uh, a partnership with uh, with a third party uh, organization that um, that handles that for us. So uh, the messages are 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 securely streamed out to the uh, securely sent to the um, third party uh, provider who does the transcription and sends the message back to your mailbox. Um, we are. One of the things that you'll see in a future release is bringing that internal to the system uh, so that the, the transcription will all be done uh, internally. But it is supported today. Uh, it's done with a third-party service. And uh, in a future release, uh, and you know, for the first year, and as long as you're covered under maintenance with your dealer, uh, you will have a software assurance we call Express Care, which will provide to you the... Uh, um, you know, the, the advance, uh, the new releases as they come out for no additional cost. Uh, so as that comes out, uh, you know, there may be uh, an individual user cost for the licensing of that, uh, but when it moves internal, you'll be able to get access to that uh, release as well once it gets out the door. So. Okay, perfect. Uh, last question. Does it offer time of day greetings, playing different greetings um, at times? Yeah, sure. That that can certainly be um, be set up within the system. Um, it, it takes uh, it, there is uh, some special programming that you can put on there. There's a a module that enables that on the system. It's it's generally included in most systems um, called Schedule Express, which allows that scheduling. And then that again, that's going to be enhanced significantly um, 
Uh, I think it's going to be in the next release or, uh, you know, an update after that. So in a future release, you're going to see some significant enhancements to that uh, time of day uh, greetings for individual mailboxes. Uh, we and we also support, uh, obviously, time of day greetings for call processing automated attendant greetings as well. So yes, both of them are supported in the system today. Well, thanks very much for everybody for uh, hey, We look forward to visiting with you to see how the CXC, the AVST technologies can, uh, can meet your needs in replacing your uh, systems.